Good morning, everyone. It is Father the Man, the Myth, and the Legend, Father C, with your Monday morning message on this Monday, May 1st, the Memorial of St. Joseph the Worker. And let us continue to work together in the vineyard of our Lord Jesus Christ and building up his kingdom. What a great weekend we had, my dear brothers and sisters. What a phenomenal weekend. It was a special weekend, especially for seven of our students who received our Eucharistic Lord, our Lord Jesus and the Most Holy Eucharist for the very first time at the 1030 a.m. Mass this past Sunday. Congratulations goes out to those seven students, and may we as a parish family, as a Catholic community, continue to keep them in our prayers. And to all those students in all the parishes in the United States and their diocese around the world who receive First Holy Communion, let us keep them in our prayers as well. Let us pray for our families. Um, as I reminded them on the Feast of Good Shepherd, of the responsibility that they accepted to raise their children in the practice of the faith. May we continue to pray for them that the Lord may strengthen them in their awesome vocation as shepherds and guides to their children. I also want to express my sincerest appreciation to especially Mrs. Pat Reichert, who is our first and second grade catechist, and to all our catechists who have educated our children throughout the years, thank you for your dedication. We are truly grateful for all your hard work, and we appreciate it so very much. I also want to thank Mrs. Lisa Myers, our coordinator of religious education for our parish. There's a lot of organization and preparation that goes on behind the scenes, and she does so much as the coordinator of our religious education program. And I want to express my appreciation and gratitude to for all her hard work. And so may we keep all these wonderful people, our seven parish children, in our prayers as we go about our week. This is a very good week. It's been a great week for our parish as we boost in and we move in. There's so much um, to celebrate. It is the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, and you know my Monday morning message this week is to talk about you know the importance of our work as shepherds to lead and guide others to their salvation, to help them get to heaven. That is what our goal and our mission is, to grow and make disciples of all nations and to lead them to their goal. And so it's, it's a lot of hard work being a shepherd. As I mentioned, um, at Mass, it's not always easy being a shepherd. Sometimes we we get a brunt of a lot of things. And when you're a true shepherd, you're not going to make everybody happy. Um, you know, shepherds were seen. Sometimes when we have to lead and guide, is no matter even how, many gent how gentle we are, sometimes we experience that rejection and that ridicule. Um, but don't be discouraged by that. Keep persevering. Keep trusting the Lord with all your heart, soul, and strength. And yes, sometimes when we try to do the right thing, and, and, and sometimes no matter how we say it, you know, people might reject us. Um, they might just say, simply say no. Um, they may ridicule us for our faith. Don't let, let that be a discouragement, but keep persevering and remain true to Christ. Follow the example that Jesus gave. Walk with Jesus. Trust him with all your heart, soul, and strength. And today as the church commemorates the memorial of St. Joseph the Worker, you know, he was so patient and he persevered in his role as, you know, he was a humble laborer. He was a carpenter. But he did so much to protect our Lord Jesus and the Blessed Virgin Mary. He was a true, um, you know, earthly father to our Lord. And he did the best he could to guide and lead them and to prepare them and to protect them. And so today we honor him and we seek his intercession to help us as we, you know, go out into the field, as we labor in the vineyard, um, as we become shepherds, um, that we may be patient um, and that we may persevere in that work. Um, May is also the month of the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
And as I talked about at the Mass of First Holy Communion, the Blessed Virgin Mary's desire, you know, as he expressed as he came to uh, St. Juan Diego in um, Guadalupe, was to build a church. And of course, that was a building of a physical church, but there's a, a greater church that we're called to build, the entire church. And that role and that responsibility is entrusted to us. Yes, we play a double role, as I mentioned at Mass this weekend. We're both sheep and we're also shepherds. We're sheep with one shepherd, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But Jesus gives us a share in that role of shepherding. Um, some people, you know, I'm a pastor. So, you know, in a way, I'm a shepherd. Um, parents, um, you're a shepherd. You're, you're entrusted to, you know, guide and bring your ch children and up in the faith and to bring them closer to heaven. Um, you know, and that role can also be shared by grandparents, godparents, aunts, uncles. You know, we all have a unique role. Our role is the same. It's the mission of all Christians, and that is to make disciples of all nations. And we work at that, and that's our call. Um, and so may we strive to remain faithful to that. So to build up the church, that is our, our message today, how we can build up the church. Now, um, one of the things you might have noticed at the 1030 Mass is that I did give um, a part of the homily um, in Espanol, in Spanish. Um, you know, our parish, and I've, I've seen this, is that we do have a growing um, Hispanic population. We see it in our religious education program. Um, I see it, you know, occasionally at Mass or all the Masses that, uh, you know, I celebrate. And that is why, you know, back in January, we started um, celebrating a Tuesday evening Mass in Espanol and Spanish um, as a way of outreach and to um, reach out to the Hispanic community um, and to bring them together. And that Mass has been very, very successful, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, uh, on a Tuesday evening, we get anywhere from about 20 to as high as 40 plus, um, which is um, phenomenal. Um, you know, it's one of the things is, you know, even though I recognize my dear brothers and sisters that I am truly not a native Spanish speaker, but I see the need um, for, you know, outreach. Um, the Hispanic community, my dear brothers and sisters, can bring so much to the table. And, you know, that ministry is so very vital. Um, the Hispanic community um, brings a tremendous faith. Um, they are so very family oriented, community oriented, um, and also you know they bring a youthfulness of spirit, and so you know they bring excitement um, to the faith. They have so many wonderful gifts um, to offer, and we have so much to learn. And so we are going to continue with our Hispanic outreach. Um, you know. You know, so it's, it's an important ministry um, in the life of the church. But, you know, ultimately, my dear brothers and sisters, we're not, you know, English. We're not Hispanic. We're truly, most importantly, Catholic. And, you know, and so, you know, I encourage, you know, members of both um, communities, um, you know, you know, from my, our community, the English community, to the Hispanic community, to you know, work together um, to build up um, this king, uh, this this kingdom of God on earth, um, and, and to work together because we have so much that we can um, enrich each other. And you know, so in the next couple of months, we're continuing the discussion um, how we can um, integrate um, both communities, and by integration, it means bringing the communities together. You know, there is a need, um, you know, for, you know, the Spanish language. Um, that's why, you know, occasionally you'll hear me preach in Spanish. Many people, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, many people in the Hispanic community understand English. Um, there's others that don't. And so, you know, the, the, you know, the mixture and the blend, um, you know, of English and Spanish, you know, occasionally is necessary. Um, it's an important, um, you know, way we can out speak. Ultimately, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, and, and I, I recognize I have never been good in languages. Uh, you know, I've studied French, I've studied Spanish, I studied Latin, I studied Greek. You know, 
I'm just not good at languages. I don't pick it up. But ultimately, you know, as I would encourage anybody, don't let that ever be a barrier. We all speak one language. We're all Catholic. We all have one faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And we can speak a very universal language, you know, a handshake, a nod, a smile. Um, you know, you know, I encourage members of our English community to attend the Tuesday evenings, evening uh, Mass in Spanish. People say, well, I won't understand a single word. I preach in both languages. I both speak in English and Spanish. But come, you know, experience, you know, the the language, but also, more importantly, experience the, their faith, their deep faith, and, and their excitement of the faith. And so, I, you know, I invite you, as I invite members of the Hispanic community attend any of the English masses, um, you know, to, to you know, learn, you know, learn from one another. And so I do believe there's so many, you know, opportunities for, um, uh, for enrichment um, and integration um, to bring a new spirit and a new life um, into our one family of faith. And so I think that's important. And, 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 you know, and since we're starting off, we can work together. Um, it might be easier for us to, you know, to integrate. Um, one of the things, you know, I, you know, and again, I'm talking about my own weaknesses. I don't let my own weaknesses. I try not to. I realize I'm not the most perfect person when it comes to Spanish, but I got to work at it. I got to try. Um, and I'm doing it because I love the Hispanic community. I love everyone. I love the Italians. I love the Greeks. I love everybody. And my our message is to build up God's kingdom. And sometimes that means we have to go out of our comfort zone. And, you know, languages may not be, you know, very easy for me. But again, the smile, the handshake, you know, the, the nod. And, you know, we all speak a universal language. And again, as I mentioned, it's our one faith in Jesus Christ. And so, so much to offer. And you know, both communities, all communities, you know, how can we bring our community together? You know, cultural festivals, food festivals. There's a lot of things that we can do um, to, 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 to grow. You know, sometimes in the liturgy, we may have to, you know, do bilingual things. And that's okay um, to, to, to welcome, you know, everybody and to bring the message of the gospel um, to others. And so, you know, that might be, you know, a totally new experience. But Again, it, you know, new life, new spirit, um, new opportunities. You know, we all share in this awesome mission um, to make disciples of all nations. And so, you know, there's so much uh, potential. There's so many windows of opportunity, um, so much to grow, growth. Um, you, know, I, you know, Tuesday evening, keep in mind, 6.30 evening, Spanish Mass. Again, attend, come, you know. Just participate, be, be present. Um, you know, ministry of presence is so important um, to our our family of faith, and so you know, I try to, you know, I I see a need, um, I see, you know, an opportunity to to grow our 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 church, or you know, not just you know our parish here at Immaculate Conception, New Oxford, but the entire Universal Church. This is an opportunity to bring people closer to Christ. And, you know, a knowledge, you know, yeah, I mentioned language. The other thing, too, is I'm one pastor. I'm one priest. Um, you know, I can't do everything. But, you know, I want to learn from the Hispanic community. I want to learn what's important to them and their cultural experience. I know Our Lady of Guadalupe um, is certainly one of the major ones. But what other things can we do? You know, we might not be able to do everything. But what we can do is, you know, try to do the best we can and to, you know, invite both communities to celebrate things together. Um, it's so vital and very important. And so, you know, we talk about building up God's kingdom, and that's the message this week. Build up God's kingdom. You know, build it up. Trust the Lord. Trust the Holy Spirit. That's what we're called to do. And so... You know, and sometimes when we do new things, my dear brothers and sisters, it's not always easy. As I talked about being a good shepherd, you're not going to please everybody. Trust me, I know it. You can't please everybody. You're not going to make everybody happy. You do the best you can, 
to listen and to consider. But in the end, you know, sometimes we make choices and we make decisions that not everyone is going to like. But we have to, you know, sometimes make them. You know, parents, you're not always going to make your children happy. You know, as I tend to, you know, said, sometimes you're going to tell them no and they're going to throw the royal temper tantrum. And sometimes they're going to say words that they don't really understand that are going to pierce us to our heart. Like, I hate you. How many times have I heard kids say that um, to their parents when they don't get their own way? No, they don't mean it. They don't understand it. Um, you know, again, that's an opportunity. It hurts us. Yes, it cuts us to the heart. But, you know, it's an, an opportunity to, you know, again, you know, to guide and to shepherd them. Um, and then as they become teenagers, they become more rebellious. You know, be patient with them. Love them. You know, need needed, guidely, you know, shepherd them, correct them. Um, you know, we're not, you know, sometimes, you know, we say we're not our children's best friend, but, you know, sometimes the best friend is the one who tells people what they need to do. Um, and that's hard. You know, if you find somebody who tells you the way it is, um, what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, um, that is, that's truly the best friend you could have. You know, even as a pastor, I don't want people to tell me everything that I want to hear. I want them to tell me what I need to hear. And sometimes when I ask people, you know, for guidance and wisdom, you know, I want them to tell me what is their opinion. You know, as you know, as I talk about, you know, you know, transitioning and becoming, you know, you know, a little bit more bilingual, you know, I'm talking to members of both communities, what are their needs? You know, I'm talking to members, you know, the English community, I one on one, you know, what do you think about this? Um, you know, to get input, um, the thing the, to think of things that I don't necessarily know. And, you know, sometimes I'll people be honest with me. Tell me what do you think? Um, and let's have that conversation. I mean, again, you know, I can't always make do things that everybody wants. But a good shepherd listens. A good shepherd is patient. Um, and so that's what we need to do. And so may we pray for patience. May we patiently go out into the world um, to proclaim the good news. And yes, the Lord is our shepherd. He is the one guiding us. And may we place our faith, our trust, and our hope in him. I hope everyone has a good week this week. It's a wonderful opportunity. Um, you know, one of the things I do want to say, we, if you haven't noticed, we have gone back to um, live streaming on Monday mornings only and the Tuesday evening Spanish Mass. Um, you know, Monday, you know, is our weekly live stream. The reason why I do it during Advent and um, Lent is to provide, you know, a spiritual opportunity, maybe, you know, to, to tune in, to listen to the message. Um, you know, there, it's a both and, you know, I've been utilizing technology more. Um, you know, of course, we want to encourage more and more in person um, to gather, you know, for mass in person. Um, but we also recognize that not everybody can get here. Um, you know, not, you know, people might be sick. Um, people might have mobility issues. And so we do want to provide, you know, those opportunities um, when we can. And so, you know, Advent and Lent is, a, you know, a good spiritual opportunity to provide that daily. Um, and also, you know, you know, we did it with the octave of Christmas and things like that. So, so Monday morning is our Monday morning live stream. The Tuesday evening Spanish Mass will be live streamed. And of course, we're going to continue live streaming the um, the three masses on the weekend, the 4.30, the 8, and the 10.30, um, you know, to provide that opportunity um, for individuals. Um, you know, if for some reason, you know, we don't have somebody to operate the camera, one of those masses will be live streamed. You know, I, I try to live stream all three, but, you know, it's possible, you know, if I'm away or somebody who doesn't know how to operate the camera, um, you know, that's a possibility too. Um, the other reason why during the weekday, you know, I do it d during Advent and Lent, but um, one of the things you may notice is that I, I sneak off the altar and come back on. It's because we the controls for the camera and the angles are back in the sacristy. So it's one less thing for me to 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 worry about and for me to function uh, focus on the on the liturgy. Um, you know, I don't mind doing it. 
Um, but, you know, sometimes you're going, did I change the camera, didn't I? And, you know, that's why sometimes, you know, you might see the one angle because I totally forgot to change the camera. So it's, you know, another thing not to worry about for my my part. But, you know, again, to provide the opportunity and, you know, to, to talk about things online. That's why we're trying to do the Monday morning messages um, from my office so we can, you know, to have outreach and keep people updated what's going on. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in our parish and um, so many, you know, windows of opportunity. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I thank you for your attentiveness. I thank you for your witness. And may we continue to continue continue to work building up God's kingdom here on earth. And may we pray that we may follow the good shepherd and be shepherds that he has called us to be in leading ourselves and others closer to him. God bless you and have a wonderful day.